to Jesus I surrender all to Him my free Laker I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily and I surrender Surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. all to Jesus. I surrender. Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy to be able to come your way and bring God's Word to you and spend some time with you in prayer. Over the last few weeks, we've been taking time just to examine each of the nine blessed attitudes that the Lord Jesus shared at uh, the Sermon on the Mount, as part of His Sermon on the Mount. And we've gone through the first six of these attitudes, and we're going to take time just to look at the last three. uh, in this in this program. Now, just to remind us, Jesus called each of these nine attitudes that he presented as blessed attitudes, or blessed are those. That means people, as we walk with these heart conditions or heart attitudes and maintain uh, this heart posture before God and in, in, our, in our relating to people, then we are blessed. That means we are blessed by God and we are blessed uh, before God. So God looks upon us with his favor. And then for each of these attitudes, Jesus promised a certain outcome. And we position ourselves to experience those outcomes that Jesus talked about. So these blessed hard attitudes is, is so important for us. And as I mentioned in the previous program, It's not that we pick and choose one or a few of these hard attitudes that Jesus mentioned, but it is something that we walk in all of them, all the time, consistently. So we ask God, saying, God, create these hard attitudes in me, these blessed attitudes. Help me to have a heart that is like these, that that contains and is described by each of these nine hard attitudes that Jesus spoke about. Help me to maintain that. Help me to walk with it consistently so that then I can be a blessing to those around us. I can glorify God and I can experience the blessings that Jesus spoke about. The seventh hard attitude that we're going to pick up with uh, is in verse 9. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed, spiritually calm with life joy in God's favor, are the makers and maintainers of peace. For they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Or as King James would put it, blessed are the peacemakers. For they are the sons, or they will be called the sons of God. So he's talking about having a heart condition or heart attitude, or having this a peaceful spirit. The spirit of a peacemaker, somebody who is pursuing uh, and uh, maintaining uh, peace uh, in relationships and in, 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 in relating to people, that we make that our priority. So as we interact with people, of, of course, there will be offenses, there will be hurts, there will be wrongdoing. People may hurt us, say things that may... Uh, offend us, may do things that let us down, and all those things will happen in our relationships and our relating to people. But as we experience those kinds of things, our heart attitude must be, I am going to do what brings about peace, what brings about healing in relationship, in relating to this person, that I pursue peace. Offenses will come, but it makes it is our choice therefore to pursue peace. In Romans 12 and verse 8, the Bible says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That means, look, to the, whatever extent that you can go, whatever you can do from your side, you live peacefully with people around you. You're a peacemaker and you're a maintainer of peace. You are walking with a spirit of peace. 
In Hebrews 12, verse 14, the Bible says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. So you pursue peace. You make it a choice to go after things that make for peace in your relationships. Now, in doing that, it may involve, as we spoke earlier, showing mercy. It may involve erasing the, uh, the remembrance and the recounting of wrong that has been done, just letting people go. It may involve saying sorry. It may involve asking our forgiveness. Whatever it takes, you choose to maintain peace. It may involve not retaliating when, uh, uh, when people are, are hostile to you, that you don't retaliate because you want the, you know, things just to calm down. You, it may involve walking away from a, a difficult situation in order to maintain peace and so on. But whatever it takes, if you walk with a spirit of peace, if you walk with a heart of a peacemaker and a maintainer of peace, the promise here is, you will be called a son, a child of God, a daughter of God. What does it mean? It means that as you live like this, you're someone who's going to manifest the very nature and the character of God. That people say, wow, that person is a child of God, is somebody who is revealing, putting God on display through his or her life. You will be called a son of God, a child of God. A walking in peace is key to manifesting our sonship. It's key to revealing the very nature of God. If you walk in peace, you're positioning yourself for other people to see Christ in you, for other people to see who God is and what is He like through your life as you choose to pursue peace. Just remember that, that every time you choose not to retaliate, every time you choose to stay calm, and uh, resolve a matter peacefully, you are positioning yourself to reveal God through you so that other people see who God is through your life. And not only that, when you walk in peace, the Bible presents something very powerful. It positions you to walk in authority. It positions you to walk in dominion over the enemy. In Romans the 16th chapter, the 20th verse, it says, And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The God of peace. You know, I, I believe it is it was spirit anointed and spirit appointed for the apostle Paul to say the God of peace. He could have said the God of power. He could have said the God of thunder or he could have said the God of wisdom. But here he's saying the God of peace will crush Satan. When we walk in peace, uh, we are moving in God and we are positioning ourselves to walk in a place of dominion and authority over the enemy itself. So remember, as a peacemaker, as somebody who is pursuing peace in relationships, as somebody who is choosing to do what peace would do, what would bring peace in a situation, you are walking as a son or a daughter of God. You are revealing God. You are manifesting who God is. You are walking in your sonship privileges and you're positioning yourself to walk in dominion and authority over the enemy. Blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called the sons of God. The next hard attitude that Jesus talked about, this is the eighth one, is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. He said, Blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love, are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. He's saying, blessed are those who are persecuted for doing what is right. For doing what is righteous. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, in this whole Beatitudes, there are two things Jesus mentions that open up the experience of God's kingdom. First, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And now again, he's saying, blessed are those who are persecuted for doing what is right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, I want us to understand this. Uh, uh, what heart attitude would it take for somebody who is, uh, do, who when they are persecuted for doing what is right, will continue doing what is right? It's the heart attitude of somebody who is strong in spirit. And so I would just title this attitude uh, as, as somebody who's strong on the inside, was strong in spirit, and they will not back off. 
They will not quit. They will not give up on doing what is right, even when they are persecuted, even when they are opposed uh, for doing what is right, for doing righteousness. So it takes somebody of, uh, of a strong spirit uh, who has great conviction for righteousness, who has great conviction for doing things that are right, and they will not back off on it. And Jesus said, blessed are such people. They are going to experience the kingdom. They will enter in. They will have the kingdom of God. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 to 21, Peter says this. He says, for this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. So what Peter is saying is this, you know, if you're doing what is right and you're facing hardship because of doing what is right, people oppose you, criticize you, uh, say all kinds of things against you, persecute you, because you're doing what is right in God's eyes. He says, you know, this is commendable before God. You are blessed before God. God's approval is on your life. And then he points to Jesus. He says, you know what? Jesus did exactly that. That Jesus, as a righteous man, he suffered for the unjust. He suffered for the sinners. He suffered at the hands of sinners. Although he never did anything wrong, he lived righteously. And he says, if we are suffering for what is right, we are walking in the footsteps of our Lord. We are doing what Jesus exactly did. And we have God's approval upon our lives. And Peter reiterates this in chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. He says, who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sin. So he's saying, look, if you're doing what's right and you're suffering, uh, he says, that's commendable before God. You are following the example of Jesus and don't be ashamed of that. Don't be ashamed if people criticize your good conduct, your morally upright conduct uh, that you are demonstrating and you're walking in, you're just following in the footsteps of Jesus. So somebody who is strong in spirit, who is not afraid to do what's right, even if they are opposed, even if they are persecuted, Jesus says, if you are such a person, you know what? you are going to experience the kingdom of God. You're going to experience the rule and the dominion, the power and the authority of God released through you. So be a person who is strong in the spirit, who is strong in their heart, who is not afraid to stand up for what is right. You have a conviction. You have a, a strength to do what is right, even if you're opposed for that, because that's positioning you to experience the working of God's kingdom in your life and through your life. The last beatitude that we want to look at, what Jesus mentioned, is in Matthew 5, verses 11 and 12. Jesus said, Blessed, morally courageous, and spiritual alive with the life joy in God's goodness are you. When people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you, because of your association with me, be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great, absolutely inexhaustible, for in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I would title this as being having a faithful spirit. Jesus said, if people persecute you because you are following me, because you are bearing my name, because you believe in me. If you are opposed, you are persecuted, and people do all kinds of things against you because you believe in Jesus. He said, you're blessed. And your, the, the blessing is this, your reward in heaven is great. Your reward in heaven is great. Now, 
Of course, in this world, when you and I follow Jesus Christ, it's not going to be easy. There will be people who will mock us, who will laugh at us, and worse still, they may try to harm us, kill us, uh, bring an end to our lives. Jesus warned us about that. In fact, when he sent his disciples in the very beginning in Matthew 10, verse 22, he told them this. He said, you will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. He said, you know, guys, I'm sending you out on a mission, but before you get too excited, I want to tell you something. People are going to hate you because you carry my name. People are going to hate you for what you do in my name. People are going to hate you for preaching my name. He said that. But he told them, if you endure to the end, if you don't give up, if you stay faithful in your uh, faith in me and your love for me, you stay faithful to the end, he says, your reward will be great. You will be saved. Your reward in heaven will be great. Paul writes that in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. He says, For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. That means you're called not only to believe in the, G in the Lord Jesus Christ, but be ready to stand up to any persecution that may come your way for His name's sake. And Peter, once again, writing uh, in 1 Peter the, chapter 4, verses 12 to 16, he says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he's blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. So, Peter tells us once again, you know, if you suffer persecution for the name of Christ, for the name of Jesus, he says, God's Holy Spirit is on you. God's glory is on you. And you know what? You are going to be partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, of the great things that will be revealed in the kingdom to come. So that's the blessing that Jesus promised. For those who are strong, who are faithful in their spirit, who don't quit following him just because they are persecuted and they face opposition. He says, your reward in heaven is exceedingly great. Be somebody who is of a faithful spirit. Be someone who is of a strong spirit, who will not quit when they face persecution face challenges because of doing what is right. Be faithful to the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time where we could review these blessed attitudes that Jesus spoke about. And we pray, Lord God, that you will give in our heart, give to each of us the grace to be peacemakers, God, to have a spirit of peace. Give each of us the grace Lord, to be faithful in our spirit, faithful to the Lord, even if we face persecutions because we bear His name. Give each of us a strong spirit that we will not quit doing what is right, even when people oppose us, God, knowing that we will experience the kingdom of heaven breaking out in and through our lives. I pray this grace upon each of us. Help us to walk with these blessed attitudes to maintain this posture before you, God, in our hearts and to walk in the fullness of each of these blessings that you promised. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders' conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping 
our people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India. We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like mp3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us. So when somebody is speaking destructive things over their own life, you know, I will amount to nothing. I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think my life is going to be very successful. When you speak those negative words, we are causing death. We are speaking destruction into our life, into our world. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Those who choose to speak good words, positive words, words full of life, will enjoy the fruits, the benefit of speaking those words.